Hi chaps, this is a compact Prestario F500. Now, one of the problems that this particular laptop has, along with um, some of the Hewlett Packard uh, laptops, is that the GPU overheats and basically desolders itself from the motherboard. To fix that, we need to reflow it. Now, to do that, you need a few things. You need, first of all, a paint stripper gun, some tin foil, um, and a heat proof surface. Now, optionally, at the same time, I'm going to use a laser thermometer which will provide feedback as to how hot the uh, processor is getting as um, as the process goes along. So I'm going to have to dismantle this and I'm not going to put that on camera because it's a long process. Um, I'll show you what the problem is and why it overheats like this um, but um, yeah I'm not going to put, this up, put the whole thing on camera. Also to show you what happens when the system does have a faulty GPU I'll start it up and you can see exactly what the lights do Let's just make sure it's all in camera. There we go. Okay, so power comes on just fine. Nothing on the screen. It stays like this for about 20 seconds and then turns itself off, turns itself back on again. And nothing happens. Just it keeps going over and over. There you go. <laughs> well, it's gotten a little bit darker since, so I've had to turn the lights on. Right, now this is the motherboard. It was a lot more difficult to pull it out of the system than I thought. Um, if you want to try attempt to do this yourself, then there are two small sort of nuts that look a little bit like this on the bottom the bottom side, uh, right next to the, um, the, the Wi-Fi system. So you need to pull that out. So the Wi-Fi card, not system Christ. <laughs> right, now this is the problem. As you can see, this is the heatsink and this is the fan. So, here's the CPU, here's the GPU, here's the fan. So whatever heat comes from the CPU is sent down this copper pipe over the GPU before it reaches the fan and the other heatsink which is in there to cool it down. Therefore, there's massive overheating that occurs around about here. And of course the GPU eventually burns out or it gets desoldered, so of course it has to be fixed. Alright, here's my improvised setup. I'm using a bit of tin foil from a tin tray, usually used to hold Chinese food. I don't have any on the roll, so I wasn't able to just use that this time, so yeah. Um, I highly recommend, if you're going to do this, that you find something with a heatproof surface, like I mentioned earlier. I'm using my cooker as a as a uh, heatproof surface and I'm using an old DVD player bottom uh, to hold it up, hold the motherboard up off the um, off the grill itself. Now the reason for that is um, we don't want any of the heat to go anywhere it shouldn't and damage any components. So that's what that, that does that, it keeps it from distributing heat. So okay, from now I'm going to start up, I'm going to check the temperature. The temperature is 16 degrees. So I'm now going to start using the paint stripper gun.
hopefully that'll be enough. It peaked out at 262 degrees on this uh, on a th the laser thermometer. So hopefully that'll be enough. So now we're going to leave it to cool down a bit and give it a try. Now I'm going to create a, a very. I'm not going to put it all back together to try it. I'm just going to uh, plug the battery back in and the screen and see if it starts up from that. But uh, I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. All right, guys. Minor change of plan. Um, because of the way I took the system apart, I left the wires in place um, without taking out all, all of the modules such as the power button down here. Um, the reason for this is I didn't want to lose uh, where any of the, the, the cables were supposed to plug into and didn't want to sort of sacrifice functionality later on. So anyway, I've plugged it up the best I can without uh, finishing it off, uh, but we're pretty much at the point now where it's put back together completely. Apart from the fact that I forgot to put more thermal compound on the um, on the GPU to stop the overheating from happening again, so I'm going to have to open it back up anyway. But I thought I'd give it a test before I did that, just to make sure that what I've done has worked. So here goes. Sweet. I don't know if you can see that on there, but it says compact across the top. And they're now operating system not found. So it definitely is working. Hold on, this is going to get a bit shaky. Sorry. If you can see, oops, if you can see that there. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Operating system not found. So it is working. So I'm relatively happy with this. This is my first attempt at doing something like this. So, um, yeah, it all seems to be working great. And, um, yeah, I'll get back, put it back together and finish finish the video off. All right, finally I've managed to put the thing back together. <laughs> it took me quite a while, um, but yeah, um, it all seems to be working now. So again, start it up. I put a new hard drive in it, but I haven't formatted it yet, so it might boot into Windows XP, but it might not. There we go, the compact logo. Yeah, it's going to let us. That's quite a, a feat really. But yeah, I need to format this drive anyway. It doesn't have all the drivers set up for this machine. Cause it's off my old uh, Dell Vostro 1400, which uh, had a meltdown. Couldn't fix it with this technique, but um, now I've got a working laptop, which is great. <laughs> Green screen of death. Well, never mind. At least it's, uh, it's coming up with a screen now, not the black screen of death, which is... Uh, Better than nothing, I'm telling you that much. Anyway, if you've enjoyed my video, do comment on it or like it or something. <laughs> but uh, if people do uh, like my videos, I'll, uh, I'll do more. I've got at least one more coming up for the uh, Sega Master System, which uh, I picked up one, which was a, a bit um, knackered. So my next video will be about uh, repairing the power supply system on that. Anyway, thanks a lot.